All right, so we are creating assets, character assets at this point to go onto our stage. And I am just organizing them. So the, the greatest tool we have in digital animation is Command J to be able to duplicate either a group of layers or a single layer or even just a selection within that layer. So my character is not just um, a character. This character also has to have a mouth that opens, an eye that I think I'm going to have the eye kind of roll around, maybe a tail that wags. All of those things I'll build up in assets. That character also has to be able to move. So I made a duplicate of that character folder and just moved it down to where it can kind of hide for the bug. But the problem is, you know, these feet are, aren't covered up by it. And that's just a way that I had my, my landscape set up. So what I need to do is take care of that. And the way I can do that is by doing what I know about compositing and copy and paste this big section of these rainbow rocks and move that up above. So that it's part of the close foreground, right? And that way my creature can go above and below this. So I'm going to select all of that close foreground, copy it, and move that onto my stage file and paste it in. And that replaces the close foreground I already have. I just need to move it into place. Oops, wrong layer. Unlock that, delete it, replace it with this. So I'm kind of just testing out, like having my actors walk the stage and seeing which aspects I need. Okay, so now if I take my character and let's take the whole folder, copy it, paste it in, whoops. Take the whole character. <laughs> copy it and paste it in. You see how that folder comes onto my stage? And then with all of its shadows and all of its different aspects. So I'm gonna build aspects like its mouth and its eye, but that will take a little time, so I'll do it in a second. And then I can set it back into my environment. Right. So that it can pop up convincingly. And that shows me that I need to customize my stage. So I am going to split this. So I'm going to arrange and say, uh, consolidate all to tabs. So I can switch back and forth between the assets file and the stage file and zoom in a little bit because I need to get this line correct. Huh, and for some reason, oh, I see why. So we're each going to have different hangups with our different animations and what we want to do. So we just want to try to understand it from the beginning. So what I need is basically to get this ridge just right. At least right enough for a GIF animation. All right, so I'm going to duplicate. In fact, I'm going to be really, really safe. I'm going to turn off the atmosphere, and I am going to say layer flatten image just for a second, and I'll undo it. Copy this, then go to my stage file and paste that on, and then move it into place. because this needs to be the foreground on my stage. Because stage is different than photography. 
that character needs to be able to sink behind it. There we go. See? So it gets to pop up in and out like a puppet stage. Woo! And sink into the environment. Like that. Okay, so now I can merge the close foreground together with this. And lock it. Okay, so that's just kind of testing out my character. Let's test out my other character. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's undo the flatten so I get all my layers back. We definitely don't want to flatten our assets permanently. And I go to my character Y, not my character Y copy. I want the big guy. I want this guy. And I'm going to copy him. So Command C, and he's still a smart object. Then go to my stage file, paste him in. Command B, and then he goes back in the far, far ground. This is character um, Z. So he's back here. So let me label him. This is just testing things out. Are these characters going to move on my stage in the way I want? So he's going to pop up. Ooh, maybe he'll do it over here. Like a big Godzilla kind of creature to eat the guy in the foreground. All right, so he's good. That works for my stage, right? Yeah. Okay, next, I have the bug character. You do not need to have three characters. So now let's play with my space bug. I'm going to select it, select all, Command A, not, not Command A, Command C. And then paste the space bug on top of the close foreground. Move him on. Notice he has a shadow with him. So he's going to go like this. And then he's going to dip behind. And then he's going to scurry up. And this is, in theater, this is what's called blocking. right? <laughs> like making sure your characters are going to interact with the stage in the way they want. And then he's going to get eaten. Da -da. Yes, and that's all going to work. Okay, so I'm going to keep them in the close foreground for now. Okay, good. Save my stage. I've accomplished my rough blocking by like moving these little stiff um, characters into their different places across foreground, middle ground, and background in the way I need. So I can turn them off for now, and I know where they will exist. So... Command S, save my stage. Now I need to start building the assets I need to tell the story. I'm going to start with the space bug because it will be uh, the easiest to kind of show you. So I have a lot of things here. It's probably a good idea to turn some of them off that are confusing, like the different characters. Okay, so I have my space bug. Here he is. Right. The first thing I want to do with my space bug is have that space bug scurry up this hill. So in order to do that, I need to maybe change its leg position a little bit. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the bug, and then I'm going to use this new tool, which is under Edit, and it's Puppet Warp. So it's just like a transform tool, except that it takes your cutout, works really well on like a nice cutout character, and then you click on these anchor points at the joints, which is another reason you need to understand the anatomy and the joints of your character. So I'm gonna click along the spine, and I'm gonna click at the joints of the feet and of the knees, and I am not going to like study footage of bug movement, but now with Puppet Warp, I can move something and it will move and warp the creature using those joints. So I'm going to change its position just a little bit, like change its knee. Change how its leg is moving. And if I need to add extra articulation points, I can. Change its abdomen just a little bit. Just shift it. 
Its shadow will shift with it. Shift its back leg. This is what I'll call skittering. Skittering works better than walk cycles in, in GIF animations. Okay, now you hit return. So now I have two bugs, right? One that looks like this, one that looks like this. And if I just switch between those two, I can get some good movement. Now, which bug do I want to start with? I'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to turn on auto select layer, and then I'm going to build all of my bug assets. So my space bug is going to start here, coming from the corner, and then the puppet warp version is going to be up here. And then I'm going to duplicate it again, command J. And I am going to start to scale it a little bit shrink it down a little bit, and then puppet warp it. This is to get the most believable movement. And I'm going to tilt its head down, but I have to put some joints in. I'm going to have him kind of disappear under this rock, or be behind this rock. So I can move his leg out. Skitter, skitter. Drop his shoulder, move his head. I can even like twitch an antenna if I want. Okay, so I have this, this new bug and I'm going to erase some parts in the bug. Actually, I want to erase some parts. I'll just move that down. So that bug will go behind that foreground rock like this. No, I want it to do something else. I want to flip it. So it's gonna dive over the edge. So this is kind of tricky. So I've got that, that's my third bug. I'm gonna duplicate that. And you can think of this as a walk cycle. I'm creating all the frames to show the movements of the bug. And now I am going to uh, flip the bug vertically. And I am going to um, puppet warp it. under edit, and I'm going to move the legs and flip them, right? Flip the joints, flip the legs. So it's like this bug has dived, you know, head first behind this rock. And the first thing I'll do is tilt its head up. So we still see a little bit of those antennas. And I'm going to move its legs all the way down. So puppet work can do pretty extreme things. And then I'm going to put the whole bug in a little bit of shadow. So this doesn't look as crazy as it is. Just taking one reference. Okay, so now I have this crazy bug shape here, right? But it's an alien bug, so it can do this kind of thing. And I'm going to scale that just a little bit smaller. So it's dipping below. I might rotate it too. Okay, so now let's see how that looks. I've got four bugs, and this is how it will look. First that, then this, then this, then this. Okay. And then, I'm just building assets, Command J from the last one, then shrink it down a little bit, because the bug's getting further into the picture and maybe darken it a little bit. Go to image adjustments, levels, darken its midtones. And it's just so hard not to just do everything you can. So I'm just gonna puppet warp it really quickly and just play with the antenna and the head. Because you'll see that when these move, it makes kind of quite a difference. Okay, so now I have a fifth movement, right? All right, now while that's happening, I need to have my creature, before I can make my first panels, I need to have my creature sunk into the background in a way that's believable. 